Before we create the content block, I'll show you again very briefly the corresponding section in the documentation. Specifically, we find that here, under commands, there's a kickstart command here that creates a content block. So that's the big difference, let me say. Currently still compared to the mask extension, content blocks must be operated via the command line. There is no graphical user interface for it at the present time. I must honestly say, I don't miss this graphical user interface. Once you've created these content blocks a few times via the command line, and then in the YAML files that are generated there, we'll see that shortly, then it goes quickly to create your own content blocks. You do that three or four times, and then you're into it. And with the help of the documentation, it's also super easy because there are many examples in there too, which you can partially copy one-to-one -one because those are simply the most common use cases that you constantly have. I've been using content blocks now for months already. In principle, I've also already created countless content elements with it in various projects, and it's really super easy. The plan is that eventually a graphical interface will still come. Then I don't know if that will still come in 13 or then only with 14. But as mentioned, I myself probably won't use it at all because I don't need it. But that's perhaps also a bit of a matter of taste. In any case, we see this command here that we need to execute. This means this is a command of the typo 3 command line interface. This means also if I go into the editor again now, I'll make my terminal here a bit larger. If I run ddev typo 3, then I see all the commands that the command line interface offers or supplies. And here theoretically also somewhere in the content block section. There we see content blocks colon create. That's the actual command. But there's an alias here make colon content block. That's also a bit historically determined why that is. But we could just as well use content blocks colon create. Content blocks colon language colon generate and content blocks colon list. We'll learn about those later. But actually, these are only the three commands that one basically needs at first. Good for the beginning, I would create a relatively simple content element. And if we look at our template there, meaning this Serenity template, I've already opened it here, the index.html file. There is, right here at the beginning, this hero element, it's called. And that would actually lend itself well. It's nicely animated and true, but this animation comes from this animate on scroll, which we've already implemented. This means that's nothing now that we would somehow have to consider. And if you look at the element itself once, then it's actually structured relatively simply. Let's look at the structure. Here the whole thing starts. A section tag is used here. Whether we use that, I don't know yet because we already built the section tags around content elements anyway. Otherwise, we might have that duplicated under certain circumstances. Then specific CSS classes are used here. We need to consider those. Then here's the image. That's a completely normal IMG tag, ultimately. Then we have a few div containers. Then here is the headline, completely normal text, and a link that has a class to be displayed as a button. Meaning this is a completely normal link here, which is styled as a button via this CSS here. And that's actually all there is to it. It's very simple in principle, and we can replicate that very well. We naturally find the code to copy it a bit later too, in the template. If I open the index.html file, I have to search where it is. There we have the hero element here. Yes, and you see that's not much code and that's a super example in principle to start with content blocks because we basically only have four, maybe five elements that we need to consider. So let's start with this hero element. I'll clear my terminal here. And the command in this case is typo3 make colon content block. Since I work with ddev, I have to prepend ddev typo3. I have auto completion in here because I've used this command often. So ddev typo3 make colon content block. We could even pass parameters to this command now, similar to ddev config. We saw that too. But I'll do this a bit interactively here now. So I press the enter key and am now asked, what kind of content block do I want to create? Or rather, which type of content block do I want to create? Because we can not only create content elements, but also page types and record types. I must honestly say, I haven't used record types at all yet. I've never needed it so far. I've never had the requirement in a project yet. And page types I've looked at, but I haven't actually had a requirement yet either where I would have really used it. I'm also not 100% sure, one would have to ask the developers. 
whether that will be maintained in that form. There were apparently some thoughts on this topic already, but I'm not sure there. We will now primarily limit ourselves to content elements, so I choose content element here now. Auto-completion is also suggested to me here. I can confirm that with the tab key and press enter. Now I need to define the vendor name. We see this schema vendor slash block name here again. That's exactly what we actually already saw for our extension for our site package. What we also saw with composer require commands. So that's basically the same. And I'll stick here now within my naming scheme, meaning W Wagner is my vendor name. And the content block name. Yes, and now I was a bit too hasty. Only the vendor name is requested here, so naturally I only need to enter W Wagner. Now the actual name, the content block name. That would be hero in this case here. And we can also define a title that would then basically be a kind of e readable designation for this content element. I'll just call it hero now, <laughs> and then I have to choose in which extension the content block should be saved. So that's also a prerequisite. You need your own extension to save the whole thing. And in this case, it's our site package. That's the only possible extension where this can be saved. I only have one custom extension installed currently. And in this case, I can confirm this here too. And now two more commands are displayed to me, specifically bin typo three cash flush group equals system and bin typo three extension setup extension equals VT13 site package. These commands are important. It's best to note them down, or rather we can also use them in the shell then with auto completion or with the history. What happens here? Okay, cache flush group equals system simply clears the system cache. This needs to be done every now and then, especially when you now create new content elements. And extension dot setup with the extension name basically ensures that the database is updated. We will create our own fields later or rather also reuse existing database fields. I'll come to that then. And so that these are then also really created in the database, this command must be executed once. Alternatively, you could also clear the cache in the backend and start this database analyzer. That would be the same. But here, it's naturally much faster. What we need to consider, we are operating with ddev here. Or rather, I am. I now need to write ddev typo 3 here. I can hear ddev typo 3 cache flush group equals system. And you see, for me, this is already completed here now. I just need to make an adjustment here. I'll say more about that shortly. I simply always let both commands execute at the same time, so to speak. Meaning first ddev typo three cache flush group equals system. And then this ampersand here, this double one, that simply adds another command right into the line. And then both commands are executed one after the other. And then I do ddev typo three extension setup extension equals vt13 site package. In this case, the name of our extension or your extension, I let that execute and should get a green success message shortly. Exactly. If we later, for example, make a typo somewhere in the configuration, then we see a red message here then and a hint where the problem might be. Maybe that happens to us too during the training, or maybe it happens to you. And then, as mentioned, you simply have to check. Mostly it's a typo in the file that we will create shortly now, and that's relatively quick to find then. Okay, what happened now? For this, let's look here into our code, and I probably need to... Exactly. Now it has updated. You see here on the same level where configuration resources lies, a new folder content blocks was created now. If we take a look in there, there's currently a subfolder content elements. If you now create page types and record types yourself, for example, you would also find corresponding directories here. And inside there now is our hero element. This means for every content block we create, its own folder is created, and all relevant configuration for this content block is usually in this folder. This also means we can simply take this folder, copy it into another typo 3 instance, typo 313 in this case, simply execute these two commands there, and the content block could also be used directly in the other instance. And that's also a very cool possibility, simply. You can therefore, perhaps also, if you have many client projects, simply create a set of common content elements here, and then simply copy them into projects as needed. Inside, there are then a few folders in a file. 
assets, language, and templates. We already see here now, yes, the currently possible spelling, that the templates folder can also be written lowercase. I haven't really gotten used to that yet for reasons, but we see that here now already. And this configuration slash block.yaml file, that is basically the core piece of a content block. The entire configuration will take place here. Here we will define what fields are used, what input fields will be visible in the backend for the editor, etc. And let's take a look at that now in the next video.